Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. Let him go. Welcome to Real Life, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on right now? I think that I'm in love with Matthew Kachuk. Are you guys all drunk? No, we're not all drunk, Chalmers. We were. We were all weekend, but now we're not. My Monday is punishing me for <sighs> being drunk. I am so tired. We put in a shift. Yeah. Nation vacation never fails. No, um, that was, whew, that was something. Well, the thing is, when you go to Vegas, you're so there's so much stimulation, and so you're like, you get up early, you're shot culture shock even. You're, the, the, you're just culture shocked <laughs> at the Wazoo. There's so many great taco and noodle places to eat at, and you're like, <laughs> okay. I were to get coffee though. No, place. it's so hard to find a coffee in Vegas, <laughs> guys. It's, this is just we're just making fun of Waz right now, but. You get you shot a can at like seven in the morning. And you walk, okay, well I guess I'm up. I'll take a nap later. I'll take a nap later, and then you go to try to take a nap, and you can't take a nap. The nap never comes unless you're Liam. He powered through a couple of naps. It never inside. comes. I wish I had that superpower. So I did not have any naps, and right now I'm paying the price. Plus, landing at midnight is also adds to the grind of of the Monday that we're feeling. That was arguably the slowest deplaning I've ever been a part of Ugh. as well. They always feel that way. No, this one specifically. Yeah. On, On the time way flight, there, though, at least. We landed yeah. in Vegas. We were off, baby. We were moving. Way home, not so much. Yeah. Energy a little bit low on this episode, except for Wanye, who is well-rested and chipper. Yes, I was with a two-year-old. It was wonderful. <laughs> He's hardly tiring. He's his own different type of ed- entertainment. Mm. It's 24 hours a day, like Vegas. There's pure oxygen in the room, also like Vegas. He can't smoke. That's the mm. difference. Oh, Park MGM, Smoke Free Casino, and I'm I'm down with it. I uh, I don't it think I'd nice. ever stay anywhere else. Oh, Cuz then you'd walk you'd walk across the street into one that was you're like, "Oh." Yeah, I was heavy. Yeah. Just felt it. <sighs> the other thing too, like you mentioned the pure oxygen and all that. Like it it, it sobers or it makes you it gives you the illusion that you're definitely more sober than you are and awake and awake and that's the real key if you yeah. are like hung over and you breathe some casino air and have a red bull i defy you to be tired in 20 minutes you won't oh no tyler did a good job of that on saturday you were looking rough my pal yep uh <laughs> full every day well, if I you watched know. oilers nation every day you oh. were putting on a show and then after we did better late than never and you were just in a crumpled heap in the corner but I, but the key is, I cranked it up for the show. Yeah, you did. You, you did. It's, it's funny. The minute the lights turned on, the cameras on. Tyler was shot of a can of the minute they're off. He was dead to the world. Yeah, that is a great way to describe it. But again, the nap never came for me in Vegas. It was quick run to the cantina, get a coffee in you. Nothing co- like coffee and tacos to fix your insides when you're Amen. violently hung Amen. over. We hit the under on the. Taco uh, I'm Bell very cantina. disappointed. I but hit the over. Surprisingly, even though there wasn't a line set. Smash the over on White Castle. 100%. 100%. Turned into be... So, first thing, the watch party we threw at Tom's Watch Bar was absolutely incredible. You're over there, Chalmers. Chalmers just showed up. Oh, hi. There's no fuzz on this one. Is that going to matter? It's not going to matter today. This is the post-Vegas episode. Well, I'm also is recording... everybody's voice going to sound a little grumbly? I'm also recording into my laptop because we forgot some equipment with somebody who's not here. And so Tyler's going to have to sync my audio to the rest of your audio afterwards. So that's going to be interesting. Oh, that'll be fun. On Martin Luther King Day, Chalmers. I'm These sure are the types we'll of How could obstacles you? we're climbing over. Chalmers, yeah. you, missed a, you missed a trip, pal. Yeah. Well, I was following it on Instagram. It looked like a lot of fun. We had, we had a little bit of fun. Yeah, that was good. I'm um, saying, so where were we? You were talking watch about... Watch bar. Yeah, the watch bar. My favorite thing, I was talking to our guy Colin Baker, who was on the trip, or who was in Vegas, sorry. He was in Vegas on a work trip, I believe, and then just happened to hang out with us. But he was talking to the manager of Tom's watch bar. And he was like, get ready, like, Oilers Nation's coming. And this guy's like, yeah, like, they have their section of 50. Like, we'll see if they fill it up. And Tom or, And Colin was like, no, like... They're filling the whole restaurant. Like, you just wait and see. And I guess Dan had a similar conversation with the guy, yeah. too, where the guy's like, are you sure you need all 50 spots? We got there earlier. We got there about an early uh, hour before puck drop. Yeah. So Dan walks in, and he was just checking in, making sure that everything was good. By the way, we got a, the one thing that Dan had to correct right before the Oilers game. Fantastic. But the manager's just like, yeah, so here's your section of 50. Because uh, we only showed up at – there was 10 of us when we showed up early. Yeah. So he's like, are you sure you need the whole thing? And then we go – we probably need the whole thing. 
And then right before the game starts, he goes, ah, oh, we got a minor problem. Dan goes, oh, what's that? We don't have the channel to show the Oilers game. <laughs> that is a what? key. This yeah. happened. Key yeah. part of the party. Yeah, Ten minutes for puck drop. Dan just like he just comes up to me laughing. He's like, so he's like, they don't have the channel to show the Oilers game, eh? That's pretty funny. I'm like, oh my god. We've only been talking to him for what two months. What was the work around? They, they, called, ended up, they called and got it in. They ended up calling to get it because eventually the place was just packed with orange. How could you? Yeah. How could you not have the channel with that <laughs> many people in there wearing orange jerseys? I, the I think are the it's number one NHL team based on TV audiences, the people I know. Mm-hmm. I'm stunned that they could eat. That's impressive that they, they made that off. work. I know. Shout out to Tom's and Dan. Yeah, it was, uh, it was yeah. looking pretty dire there. Was, was there a Tom? Tom? Did you meet Tom? No. Tom's oh, maybe the algorithm. I, I met a guy named Tom who I curl with who was at Tom's watch bar. That works for I, me. Sure. Tom's at Tom's. Yep, Tom was at Good Tom's. Good for Tom. Um, wow. But that watch party was... Legit. And the, the way they put on a show, too, like, I know you beat the San Jose Sharks, but the it was bumping in there. Oh, yeah, it was good vibes. There was a lot of people DMing us, Chalmers, saying, hey, I'm not part of the trip, but I'd like to know where to go. And I'd do the same thing every time. I'd say, no money, no info. And I would delete <laughs> them and block them. So all those people don't need to worry about them anymore. No, I'd say, keep your eyes peeled. You'll get to know where. But legitimately, if there was 25 people that DM'd us, there was... I was yeah. getting them all day. Yeah, I know Dan was too. Tyler was getting them. It's just yeah. there was Oilers fans everywhere. Buy some nation gear. Email me a screenshot of you spending <laughs> yeah. money. Exactly. I'll hook it up. Maybe a sticker. They're only eight bucks. I'm gonna say probably two, three hours before puck drop, you started seeing jerseys pop up all over the strip. And we were just thinking like we're gonna have a fun night tonight because yeah. we were pushing it heavy for that watch party. And the place was packed. So the, in the end, it was all full. Oh, well into yeah. the casino, yeah, too. filled like, the bar so. and then started pouring into the casino. <sighs> Big night for Weathers fans. We moved. Oh, man, it was good. Good we stuff. Moved. Yeah. So what did the guy say after it was all said and done? Oh, he, he like, died. <laughs> he's like, you guys can come back anytime. Hmm. Where was this place exactly? In, New York, New York. in the New York, New York. Right, it was right beside Shake Shack, for anyone who's well aware of the strip. Yeah. Very good. And you guys so, were staying where? Uh, Park, MGM, Park MGM, right across the street from New York, New York. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. So right close to the arena. And so how how long has it been since you you guys had been back to Vegas? Three, Three years. years for me. And what was your view on just the sheer price of everything these days? Oh, yeah. Vegas is it's just a... Uh, it was... Uh, I hadn't been back in probably five years from when I went. And I was blown away at the pricing of just a single drink. We went to... Uh, we so were you just hanging gambling. out at... MGM just like kind of they had a circle bar kind of we were collecting ourselves for a minute so I'm just like I'll have a pint of Bud Light and he goes 25 bucks US and I said <laughs> excuse me so I'm like Rick let's go to CVS if like, you guys yeah. are winning this is all free I would just like to note yeah, yeah we're a playing a G it. off of a some sort of horse race or something well we'll get there 25 no, the, bucks a beer is nothing the ponies weren't treating me well no ponies are just it's just a nice slow entertaining loss mm-hmm. that's any, what the ponies any are craps buddy oh boy man all this the craps. guy all the craps. All the craps. Rick, Jay, and I, we played craps three different times. Mm-hmm. I went on two heaters of 20 rolls or more. 20 is unheard of. Anything over Sorry. 10 yeah, it was is hot. amazing. It was hot. At Fremont Street, our last night there, we were at the table easy for an hour, and I played half of it. Yeah, it was wild. Were people gathering around? Our it table was packed. It got there, and then the people were cheering, and it was doing the whole thing. We were playing craps, and we were playing craps. And so it, when those rolls happen, it's funny because when, when I'm playing, I usually start with a few basics, maybe four bets. And then with every win, I add a few bets. Yeah, to keep the, planting more seeds. To, got to, to build a crop. To at some point, yeah. I have like three quarters of the table covered. Yep. Yeah, and if, yeah. You're on, and if you're on a roll, you're yeah, earning. and those, and then they start to just pay you out for stuff you don't even know you have. You're like, damn! I couldn't not hit. Yeah, yeah it was wild. It was, it was absolutely wild. wild. We with that, that that last round, we went to Fremont, and we it was like a low limit table. Like we just thought we were just playing. It's like two thirty in the morning. Ah, we'll just we'll wrap up the trip with another crap session, and just put a hundred bucks down and play for like yeah, just like over an hour. Next thing you know, it's like. We just have all these chips. It was insane. So were you the were you the the sole lucky roller, or did these guys have themselves a little bit of a run as well? And Dice never got to me at that table. Bankroll just hogged them all. Yeah, time. Was, was it to the point where like when the when you finally did crap out? Did was somebody People else like? Clapped. Yep, this guy's gonna roll for me. <laughs> You're like, People that clapped. sounds good. Well, so at that one at Fremont, we had like I, like Jay said, we just planned on wrapping up the night with quick craps. 
maybe a free drink. We'll get out of there. And then we're at the table for an hour. And we're like, okay, as soon as my roll done, we're, we're cashing out. We're yeah. leaving. But the roll just didn't, didn't end. end. It just kept going. And, and he didn't going, crap going. out. He hit the number on the button to end the game. So we didn't lose. We won on a – we we – we cashed out on a win, and so you're, and so those bets, some of those bets stay, and yeah. then the next roller comes. So did that place, person then give you the? No, no we left. No, we left. Oh, you did. did cashed out. Wow. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's good. Restraint. Very. That's the second time in my life I've come back from Vegas up money. Wow. This yeah. time was this is pretty it was pretty juicy up. It was a healthy up, because even before the hockey game that day, we were playing twenty five dollar bet table at the M- at park mgm it was stressful to start because that's it was stressful to start because you're like oh okay well we're getting a little risky here <laughs> yep but then they just kept going and going and like i did a run there but then there was another guy down at the table that did like a mini run and he kept hitting everything rick and i had on the table every single time like boom and then it's getting loud now yeah we're cheering and then all of a sudden there's the pit boss comes over he goes you oilers fans are everywhere yeah and we're winning baby in that every regard. That was a nice was one, great. too. Oh, and then we also did, uh, on the game night, Saturday night, we did a team parlay. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was, yeah. Shout out to Jay for cooking this up, though. Four How many legs? Time. Three. Three. Niners. Okay. Jags. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. And we're yeah. sitting. No. And we're in the building watching the other game. There's a guy in front of me. We got him showing the game because we know they're making the comeback. We're like, oh, my God. Buddy, at 8 o'clock... I was sitting in a pub downtown uh, and they have like, I'm not going to name the pub, but they have like two feeds to all their TVs. So you can only have two different things on at once, but the TVs aren't exactly in a position where you couldn't have the hockey game on all of them. So I had the football game on. It's 27, nothing. It's going into halftime. He's like, dude, I, like we're going to put the hockey game on. I go, don't even worry about it. This game is so over. The way that these Jaguars are playing, the way that he's thrown four interceptions, the way that the Chargers look, like this game is over. Put the Oilers game on. So we put the Oilers game on. And I just forgot about the football game until somebody was like, can you believe what happened in that football game on our text, Jed? And I'm like, what? And I go and look, 31-30. I missed it. Yep. So- All of it. When the Jags came back, we were kind of spread out over different sections. Yeah. Me and Tyler and Rick were together. Jay was a section down from us. But as news was spreading from everybody who had the team parlay, all of a sudden the cheering from across yeah. the sections were going on. It was a wild So night. what was third leg? Oilers. 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 So you had Oilers. Oh, Jags, Oilers, yeah. and 49ers. Sorry, sorry. I forgot the 49ers. Yeah. Yeah. So plus 450 yeah, or plus something. 450. So you're sitting on a two of three hitting yeah. while you're at the Oilers yeah. game. That is a good time. Yeah. It was a great That time. makes every cheer of every goal scored and every oh. every time they score, it just feels so much more amplified. Well, I'm sure I, you guys were sober too. <laughs> I went back Jeez. today and I watched like the condensed game because I had to do a show and I was like, boy, I don't really remember a lot of details from this Oilers goal. <laughs> yeah, I don't, game I don't know. Um, when Yanmark <laughs> scored that first goal, that place got so loud. Oh, yeah. yeah like, were. if you watch the go back, watch the broadcast and watch the clip of just that goal, it sounded like an Oilers home game. It's crazy. Like, uh, apparently, like, yeah, we, we like, like, we, like, all the Oilers fans there were. Making enough noise to, to to get into people's living rooms back Nick home. Alberga sent me a tweet just being like, how many Oilers fans are in there? Because on TV, it sounds like there's a lot. I'm like, it's a home game in here. Yeah. It really felt like it was a home game in there because it was Saturday night. Oilers were rolling a little bit. They got that quick goal. Everybody's there to party oh, anyway. The Yanmark revenge goal. Was you so got to wonder, like, do you did you talk to any... Like a buddy that goes to a lot of Golden Knights games from Vegas. There, like, is this happen every game? Is it the There's Arizona Cardinals of the of the of the NHL where it's like so, every other team that comes in basically is a home game? I talked to a Vegas season ticket holder. Well, we were, we were just in the beer line just shooting the shit. The first question he asked was an interesting one. He's like, "Have you been to a game here before?" Yeah, this is my third one. He's like. Is this the loudest building in terms of like the music being turned up that you've been to? I'm like, oh, easy. It's like, it's not like this in Edmonton. They crank it up to 15 in there. He's like, oh, okay, good. Cause he's like, I honestly, he's like, if you're in there on a Tuesday and you just want to watch the hockey game, the last thing you want is it up to 15. But yeah. Everybody's up to 15. So he often goes to games in San Jose and Anaheim. He flies out and back in just for a more just chill. Well, that's what's funny about an Oilers game on like a Friday night. Or a Saturday night, like 
the atmosphere is different in there. Everybody's into their cups as what would be on like a Tuesday or a Thursday. That's every night in Vegas. Every night. Yeah. But that's also life in Vegas. Yeah. Like, do you ever want to come out of the strip and just have it kind of be like normal? You don't have like 700 foot fountains shooting into the sky and shit? (laughs) Probably. I was, you live in Las Vegas. When I was there uh, for last year, and I was talking to someone who works on a Golden Knights broadcast down there, and she was saying that outside of coming to the arena, and she's like, and I go the long way to avoid the strip. She was like, this is going to be the first time I'm on the strip in two months. And she's like, and I live in Vegas. Because she was like, like the we, mall. No one local it, goes. Yeah, we avoid it like the plague. She's oh, like, yeah. And I'm sure for a lot of people, locals, who are like, I just want to go watch my hockey team. Sometimes it probably is like... A little annoying to be rolling in there and it's oh, yeah. like a whole fucking shebang every And night. the opposing team, but a lot of opposing team fans, and they're partying, and they're probably going to be annoying. But to answer the, the other part of the question, he said it's without question, and it's obvious, the Canadian teams, when they show up down there, especially on a Saturday, it's a big night. Speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of being drunk and being belligerent and being annoying... The shame thing? Okay, ah, whoa, yes, I was, thank you. Yep, thank you for thank glad you brought you that up. That was... You're missing the context yes, of the you, whole thing. That was yeah. not so. Good. When right. you get a penalty, when the opposing team gets a penalty in Vegas, all the Golden Knights fans point at Oilers fans and point at the guy in the box, and they go shame, 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 shame. So we were just giving it back to them with their cheer. You can tell how many people haven't been to a game in Vegas just because yeah. if you're without the context, you don't you don't know what we were. But doing. it was hilarious. Well. Okay, so I'm just learning of this. So I'm trying to I'm trying to gather my thoughts on that. So you would have been just wrapping up a game where they yelled shame at you three, I think at least three times. Yeah. That's their thing that they do. Over a penalty. Over a penalty. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah but that's but so that's I, but that's their thing that they yeah. do to the opposing team and opposing team's fans. Right. So we are giving them a taste so, of their own medicine. Yeah. Throw in their own thing. Back and, and, and to be fair, we walked in to the shame chant. Yeah, yeah. We we're being started. shamed on the way in. Like we, we, we walked in, we're getting shit. But, but like even at the end, there was just a, it wasn't our crew, it was a huge congregation of other fans that were doing it. We, did we join? Yes. You know, we did. I just, I thought it was funny. And then yeah. I saw all the reaction online. And I was like, why are, like, this is a sporting event. What do you think? Yeah, because like I all, like I found it interesting. There was the back and forth in the comments where there's some people like, "Well, if you've been to a game in Vegas, this is it's what they do." And yeah, it's like it's like a football team. So like, say like the Bengals or the Saints, who day who dat, right? And your team beats the Bengals, you're gonna make a who day joke. I, I totally get it. Without the context, though, I thought it was pretty lame. Well, I know, so, but that's why. Now, with the context, is it different? Yeah, I mean, I see. I I I, I wish. Maybe that if I scrolled to the right, I could have seen a shame chant by the crowd to an Oilers penalty. No that problem. would have given me context and I might not have been like, Oilers fans, are you just making a huge ass of yourself? Because that's kind of nah. what I thought. No. Nah. No. It wasn't like that at all. Okay, well, no. but that, but, but, it's but no different I'm not than the only going, one that thought that. It's no, no different than going, let's go Oilers, Calgary sucks, or... Like, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, yeah. like, it's like a no, it's it's... Because Vegas fans even were chuckling about it, like as they're leaving, like it wasn't a no. Because it has, it's a back and forth now. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 so now that you tell me this, it's, like it's we a back just, and forth. Yeah. The way that the video looks, well, of course, it looks like it's a bunch of people just like because not winning is, very well and being just a big belligerent group of people. No, no. Because no. what <laughs> happens is that was an impromptu video. You don't expect to see that coming out of the building, so we just captured the moment. Yeah, and you're not wrong for doing it, and the context helps though. Yeah, oh yeah, because I'm but I'm I'm the a lot. Comment lo- section was. I'll look at spicy. that. I'll oh, look at that spicy. video a lot less cringy. Yeah. <laughs> if well, now that I know the context of it, but like, all right, Oilers fans, they call the, the they're either called the Vegas Golden Knights, old timey. They call the building the fortress. So like, come on, let's let's connect the dots that the shame, the medieval shame from Game of Thrones, might be something you do in Vegas. For the Golden Knights is, inside the fortress. This is just the part where of they me. start with this silly n- night fight that ends in the weirdest way, where obviously the Oilers' night gets the shit kicked out of them sure. to kick off the game. This is the part of me that wants to be known as an Oilers fan in other cities, more like a Buffalo Bills fan, where they have respect, they don't go and make asses, to 
not being like a New York Giants or Philadelphia Eagles fans who go I think and are you're reading way too much into this. I've way been not really. I've, I've, I've it's been, kind of your identity when you leave I've, here. I've been to a city. I've been to a city that Bills Mafia has taken over. It's it's not what you okay, just well, described. <laughs> Well, I'm, maybe I'm a prisoner in the moment then because there was a lot of adulation about how the Bills fans were after. Oh, I can promise good. you, if you were there with us, you would have been shaming with all of us. It would have made so much sense. And if, you would I, especially if, I, on, if I was in the game, yeah, I would have definitely. Well, that's the whole thing. Like exactly. Because I, I would have seen the backstory. <laughs> well, especially on us. $25 beer night? Yeah. Come on. I mean, I'm glad I asked too because like yeah, that's $17 a, that helps Bud Light. A $17 can of Bud Light. $17. $17. <laughs> and I got half of one spilled on me. Are there slot machines or any sort of gambling devices in the arena? No. No. Oddly enough. Oddly enough. Brand. That is, uh, that is a... I would let them. Oh, I would have had yeah. the over on that one. Beep, 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 beep. That's yeah, how they exactly. bet. Beep, 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 beep. Speaking of betting, did you see... At twenty-seven to nothing. Oh God! Why person, would you do that? I don't know, man. But somebody so we put that in a high-interest right? Somebody bet one point four million dollars on an yeah, in-game so bet that the Chargers would win to win to net eleven thousand two hundred dollars. Listen, when you live in LA and you're high on cocaine <laughs> and your Chargers have this shit locked down, and someone says, "Hey, we got a million dollars in the stake account," and you're like, "I make that in like half a movie." What was, what was the comeback? What was what was the comeback in halftime? Like the odds? Oh. It, well, I, I don't know. A thousand? I don't know. I really don't know. I didn't Man, even look. I didn't even, any, my, somebody must have bet that. Oh, of course. Someone hired cocaine sure. in Jacksonville. Could yeah. you just imagine if he bet the other way? No. <laughs> Nobody would ever do that. But like, yeah. just think of the money. Oh my god! But yeah, that was that was a stupid thing. But like anyways, for yeah, perspective, no. I think if you put one hundred and forty dollars was to win eleven cents or something is like the same equivalent. But like you are saying, like the don't, just gamble and then get a free drink. Like really, do you even get those anymore? Like I remember gambling when I was there, and uh, nobody would even come around. We did it. Well, yeah, we did. Posting up at the craps table. We did. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. Depend depend on the. There was one table we kind of had a. I felt like at the the second craps table, like the lady would walk by and we have to be like, hey. Where the other one's like, hey, here, like, yeah. and so, but we always got our drinks and we we're making money too. So it was nice. That is nice. Any slot machines? I started, I was killing time. I got to the lobby before everyone waiting for them. So I sat in a slot machine. I put 50 bucks in and I literally lost it in 45 seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my problem with the slots is. Then you say I love gambling though. Yeah. I know I do love gambling, um, but I'm more of a table games guy because I feel like my money at least stretches longer. If I get smoked, I was. That's the beauty of the ponies. Yeah. And that, when, that is what When nice you lose. Ponies. A hundred dollars yeah. at the slot machine, and you've just been staring at a screen. It feels way worse than losing a hundred dollars interacting with a dealer, mm-hmm. yep. knowing that you may have Threatening some the pit boss. some um, say in what happens on that Even table. If right? It's an absolute well, it feels, illusion. Uh, it feels it does. Control. It just feels different. Yeah. Yeah. So I know I'm a table guy too. I really don't. When I talked to Bang Milk this morning, Chalmers, I, Chalmers, I said, "How's Vegas?" And he just goes, "Well." At one point, I looked over, and your m was just feeding money into a slot machine. And he looked over <laughs> at me, and he said, I love gambling. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it was virtual roulette. It was virtual that roulette. Was, that was the whole trip, though. That was the story. I love gambling. <laughs> I love gambling. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I loved it. Vegas is very much my thing, um, and I had a good time. Well, then the Oilers won. Like, yeah, that was it's well, so nice. So we're, we were 0 for 2 in Vegas for a nation vacation. So yeah. for them to pull out the win was real special, especially, you know, with where we're at in the in the season right now so mm. that was massive on many levels the coolest thing though ever is we went into the park ngm right after and the lineups of oilers fans the sportbook cashing out their tickets was Heaven. hilarious very funny. Heaven. <laughs> it was a long line it was yeah. very just funny all oilers jerseys everyone's like Woo! you gotta think the, the golden knights being good is good for the sports books there because most of the people come yeah. and put a put a couple sure. bucks down on their own team 100 yeah. percent. yep huh if the sports books were really bad, they'd probably have to change the well, odds the funny a bit thing is now in their favor. Is teams are getting smarter because Vegas is not that good at home this year. So they're leaving team, quick and they're not coming. They're, they're getting in, they're getting, yeah, in they're, and getting out. They're, there's no Vegas flu. Yeah, I think that even probably for the players to some extent has kind of lost its luster. Right, like once you go on a few road trips to Vegas, it's kind of like you know I what? Know, man. I don't know, man. Like, Vegas Connor's is pretty good birthday at taking on money. Friday. I thought they went he, right home. You, I know. I know so, that's what you I mean. Gotta, you got to flip it so it's a motivation to win. Yeah, yeah motivation to win. So then you could go out. The logistics of moving an NHL team with a jet and everything is probably fairly involved. Like if you're not leaving that night, they probably don't want to fly it in. 
like yeah. the plane, right? Yeah. Uh, there was so I, I somebody was asking me because I was looking at a few articles like, are the Vegas Knights the best in the league? And I'm like, no, they're the best in the West, I believe. Let me go look. Not so I went and looked at it. The Bruins are the best. In the Quietly, league. I don't know. Didn't know much about it, but the Bruins are. Unbelievable oh, oh yeah, right real, now. Real quiet. They've only lost under the radar. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. But I, I, I nobody's, no, no, no one do I, that. No Dude, one's talking about seventy it. points after forty-two That's game crazy. mark. No, people aren't being like this team could break legs. They've got five losses in regulation. Yeah, five. Yeah, in forty-two and games. Only one Stupid home. Taylor Hall playing. A I know it's not role. like quiet, like as in there. Nobody knows they're good, but like I didn't know they were that. They're that. They're like eleven points ahead of second place in yeah, the league. Hammering everybody. It's crazy. That's Best. really, really good. It's, it's they're in last dance mode. Oh, my! Is that it? They're gonna they're gonna trade for Lucic at the deadline. And oh, go for oh, it. good riddance. But yeah, I was really. I'm, I'm just. I love that that Klim and Yanmark are just continuous. They, it's they're starting to not seem like just a flash in the pan, eh? Like yeah. they're like they're, you know, they're really playing consistent. really well for us. Like it's a really cool thing to have people that you're really really excited about on the team. That aren't 97, 29, 93, right? Yeah. Or 18. And like, it's just... Look at you naming half the team you can't be excited about. What, why? Why can't no, I no, be No, no, no. I'm always excited about those guys. I'm just so glad that we got Somebody two knew, more people yeah. that's, you know, the expect, expectations were a little Clint bit low, Costa I would say. eight goals is something to see. Like, that's remarkably good. In how many games? 28 or 29, something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice clip. So it's that's just, like a 25-goal season. What, this, this is... What we've been wanting so bad. We, he's also got so a little bit long. of personality. Well, you need a few of those fun. wins, right? Like, as you're building How up your roster. How many times do we sit and look at other teams who pull off, like, random bullshit like that? And it's like, why can't the Oilers ever do yeah. that? But Clem Costin feels, like, a little different because he's playing a support role in doing this. But he's Pat Maroon 2.0, right? Like, think about the jump in the juice that Is Patty he an adorable Maroon gave. son? Uh, That's all he's missing, I think. Yeah. His little rig was a lot of it for me. He's yeah. young, but he's coming. Yeah, he's only 23. That's the other thing, too. And he's he like, has a kid? No. no. Um, 23, first-round pick, a guy who has a ton of skill. He was a like, first-round pick? Yeah. Yep. It's Late. unreal. And then still, Why'd they let him go? Because he just, they just couldn't. The, the, of like the depth Puyi. chart, of the like at the time, the depth chart just did not allow for him to St. play Louis, similar, right? similar to yeah. Samurkov yeah. with us. And still, I had PSI the other day. There was a whole big discussion. Ken Holland's such an idiot for getting him when he could have got him on waivers. And people are bitching about this move because Ken Holland didn't just claim him on waivers. And it's like, well, first off, 31 other GMs could have claimed him on waivers. Also, I think... He There's contract balancing. Yeah, there. There you need to understand stuff. why it's valuable to claim or to trade for a guy after he's gone through waivers, right? Then you can put him right in the American League. You don't have to put him on waivers. It was just, I don't know, I thought it's weird how people are still jumping down Ken Holland's throw for a great move here. Like, it's unbelievable yeah, let's what take kind of the win. that is. Let's take, take this w. win, people. Now, you're in check. You understand the CBA and the rules, right? Vaguely. If, let's just say for a scenario, Yessi Pugliarvi gets traded, right? That'd be a shame. We like Yessi Pugliarvi. He's a great role player, we do. right? He's had his moment. We'd love it to continue. Nobody's okay. saying trade Yessi Pugliarvi. Okay. If he got traded, the Bison King name to me is such a funny <laughs> thing that I don't know if it should leave with Yessi. It's so regionally specific. I just yeah. think it's funny. And I just wonder if Bison King isn't a title that transfers, like the Duchess like, of Cornwall. Like the answer. Like maybe there's a new Bison King. You want Clint? 21? I'm not saying it has to be Clem Costin. It would be nice. He's got so many good nicknames already, though. But oh, yeah, that's Cle true. Clem's good, just, and he's also the answer. Does yeah. the Bison King nickname get shut down with the departure? What's his other of nickname? Is the Clem Reaper? Really? Mr. Oh, Clem, Mr. Clem Shady, Clem Mr. Clem, Clem Kardashian. That's <laughs> Clem the Dream. Clemmy K. Yeah. Clem K. Yeah. <laughs> Get them like skimmies him. on? Yeah, it's yeah, he's got too many. Yeah, yeah. So let's give you Mark the Bison King then. Uh, but is it a title or like, is it someone's like, name? Is it like James Bond where we I'm, think it might be a sign? But like, it's less so specific to that photo. Yeah. But let's, but okay, but now let's remove that. Maybe this is just something that stays in Nation Land. What is the definition of a Bison King? And then that's how we can slot a we player We just take two. his picture and put a Bison <laughs> helmet on it and we got a new Bison King. I don't know. Well, it just seems to me... But is it, is it a certain type of player? Like, in well, I think it would be like the answer. I think it's crowdsourced and often overwritten. Mm -hmm. Also, I wonder if he's carrying the trademark forward. Wow. He's only filed. We weren't, gonna, we weren't going to listen to that anyways, were we? 
<laughs> I can't imagine. Well, fine then, your M check. You know how hard it is to make up a no, quality. I, I, I like I like the idea of keeping it. Yeah, so the like, 007. So, so let's figure out the archetype. Well, so. Jesse's still here. True. Not gone. <laughs> Did True. Vegas happen to the podcast equipment? Is that why we're both missing our fuzzies and like we're missing things? And did you guys? There's did a, everything come back in one piece? Everything came back to Edmonton. Just everything hasn't made it back to the office yet. Yeah. How was the setups in oh. the hotel rooms for for hotel pods? Actually, great. It was great. Well, that, well, that, that is long couch that we could yeah. set up and work yeah, out of. Yeah, I saw that. I think yeah. it looked good. It looked like, I mean, obviously we were in a hotel room. With were you guys into your cups for a couple of those? Uh, no. Well, I think we had a beer on one of the shows. Yeah, on, well, on our real life Thursday night, we were all a little into it. You could probably get your sports bar partner to pay for you to go do the podcast at their bar if you're filling the joint. Yeah, but the only thing is when you start getting, like, the hotel room Wi-Fi at, at Park was unbelievable. Like, we streamed seamlessly the whole time. And as soon as you start, like, going to bars and stuff, you're then relying on, like, random bar Wi-Fis. Fair, and fair, streaming fair, gets fair. harder. But, yeah, we maybe could have gotten a little bit crazier. But it was also hard. That many when, people are showing up and wanting to participate. Yeah. So did you guys all stay at the Joe's Ur- Joe's Urban? Tom's Urban. Tom's Urban. Did no, you we, stay there after the watch party? No, we party? hit Fremont, we went baby. to Fremont, man. Got to go celebrate. Isn't it incredible? We had a nation dance party for the ages. Yeah, that was sick. right in the middle. Right in the middle. Liam led us up to the gate, and we just boogied hey, all night. So was there just zip lines going back and forth yeah. over your head? So <laughs> yeah. it's Jay, Rick, and Bag Milk were already out there, and then there was a crew of myself, Liam, Kennedy, your friend Gina, producer Aaron, Gavin, the intern, my buddy John, and we were standing there, and it was like already after midnight, and we're in the lobby of Park MGM. We're like, ah, oh, God, are we all really gonna go to? all the way to Fremont. I'm like, it's already midnight. We could probably just call it a night early tonight, like get some rest. And then Liam looks at the group and just throws his hand in the middle and goes, Fremont. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's all it takes. You can't leave him hanging. <laughs> so no. then it was like, all right, Aaron's in, Gavin's in, Huge Kennedy's move. in, Gina's in. Everyone's slapping their hands Huge in the middle. Move. And then it was just down to my one buddy, John, who wanted to go to bed so bad. Oh, and come he was on, like, John. He was like, Damn it! And like throws his hand in. Oh, it was an electric moment. I loved it. <laughs> and then, and then, it, we, uh, and then we, and then, like, no, and then, cut to you guys sitting in the cab, being like, "Okay, we're just about there. Just about there. It's all quiet." Then you get out, and it's just a goddamn party. It it's is right at the entrance. Yeah, all of it is is good. What time they've done there. to like the ceiling and the dome, and just to have cool. the light shows and the stuff. It's and then going the live on. band. But the it's live band was good. excellent. Where, so. where was the live band exactly? Just kind of like in the middle, middle, the middle of yeah, the strip. Just, like yeah. right by the big D. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's like right beside the big D and I don't kind know. Kind of opens one. up. There's a street going yeah. this. Yep. Going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, Very good. So, so we boogied. And we had so much fun that night. that too we too bright in there. Uh, well, but it keeps you going. It makes I you feel know, alive. But it's. And then, so the Oilers won and the only place to celebrate that victory was back to Fremont. So we had a dance party too. Dance party too. And this time they didn't have a band that had DJ, which I was a little skeptical at first, but DJ was playing bangers. So my cousin plays guitar in the band on Fremont Street. So I was trying to organize. Come again? Yeah. So my cousin. It's a flex. Guitar in the <laughs> yeah. band it's a flex. on Fremont Street. It's like the yeah. lag lead there. there. So we were trying to organize to go see, watch his band play. That DJ replaced his band because they got rained out. They weren't allowed to play. So that's why that DJ was there. Oh. Like, too risky for the band. That's, they could fry in this rain. Yeah. Go get that DJ we don't like. Huh. Yeah, he'll play. That's cool. Yeah. Not cool that you didn't get to so see we get, the band, So we, we, we rent this, like, not rent, like, you're, you walk to the hotel, and there's always, like, these, like, like you know, uh, CIA blacked out Suburbans looking to, like, give you a ride. No, we're always rolling as, like, a, with numbers, right? Yeah. So uh, you negotiate a price with them, and you go. As, as you do, yeah. So we go, we did it the first night, then we do it the second night. We get there, and we pop out of this. So we get, we get to Fremont, we pop out of it, and then I do a, fo- I do a pocket check. No! And I don't have my phone. What? And the this thing's f- driven. So I start running after this thing down the street. That's like night. That you might as well just. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, he's got my phone. I start running, and I'm like a block and a half down. All of a sudden, boom! Like a flash. I'm like, what the hell is Whoa. it? It's Gavin. Gavin, the intern, comes bolting by me because he is now because he sees I'm getting Somebody my ass wants kicked a full-time in this photo race. This is top drawer intern. <laughs> and chases yeah. this, chases this this suburban down Does three get blocks. It? Gets it. Chases like how slow Chases are it. you getting in your old age? I have bronchitis, Chalmers. <laughs> yeah, I thumbs up them. Yeah, that was I did. I That's only heavy heard duty. like 
I've only heard was, the folklore of it. It was an amazing is, chase town. This is going to be one of those stories that lives on for a while, but also gets more intense. As it was it goes. seven blocks. Like, it'll it, be, was, it, it was about a three block chase. But every time, awesome. every light was green for this thing. So it kept just going. Then he made a left turn, thankfully, that slowed him down and allowed us to catch up. And then it was the next light that, uh, that, was a, that he pulled up that was a, just about to turn green. But Gavin got in front of him. To then finally see us. We're, I was running right behind it, waving my arms. Anyways, didn't work. Hey, Waz, take notes. This is how you treat your boss. <laughs> you don't steal his <laughs> you don't gift, steal his gift oh, at the Christmas party. His phone. <laughs> you <laughs> run after Suburbans and you get the man his phone. And Gavin, he went like, because it was, it was a good run and he was going at a top speed for a long time. In he was... Area. It he was, was raining gassed. too. Like he was, uh, yeah. he was gassed. It took him a little bit of time to catch his breath. So I'm like, "Hey man, like, because like he exerted himself to do it. It was wild. I love it. That's so good. Because if you don't have your, if you lose your phone and if you leave your phone in a cab and you watch that cab drive away, you might as well go to your nearest hardwood hardware store. There's a high buy a shovel and start digging the grave no phone. and have a long nap because it's a night ruiner. It I ruins know. everything. You I can't was do already going through the process now. of a KJ. You've lost You're your like, phone. Like I want to go home. I'll just get an Uber. Oh wait, I cannot. Yep. 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 Those fights. I guess I'll go on Twitch to talk about this. <laughs> no, cannot do it. No phone. It was great. That yeah, was an, it was an amazing save. Saved my night. Right. And I was having a great night. Great night. All right. Uh, we do have a little bit of work stuff to get to here, but first we're going to pause for a quick ad. Our friends at. You want to talk about how I ordered yes, Montana? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You want do. a nice organic ad read? I ate Montana's the other night and it was delicious. There were ribs. <laughs> They had cornbread. There was a potato. I'll tell you what, Chalmers. It was a great time. I highly recommend eating Montana's. Yeah, you guys promised me we were going to get to do a, a podcast from Montana's and eat ribs. It's and pretty stuff damn like good. When do I get to eat those ribs with you guys? Hey, that's a. Uh, oh my God. Did you hear how hard my voice cracked there? <laughs> One day your balls <laughs> will drop Keep it and together. You'll be You're a professional. <laughs> so we're doing another giveaway. If you want to have lunch with us next Tuesday, Tuesday? Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, 1 o'clock, is where we're going to be going. Going to a Montana's location in Edmonton. And all you have to do, you can email Tyler at OilersNation.com or you can DM us at Nation Real Life on Twitter or Instagram to enter this bad boy. Tell us the friend you're going to bring with you if you want to bring a friend. Yeah, you, you, bring a friend. you and a pal. You and a buddy. You and a pal. And also, what will the topics of conversation be? Set the tone. Set the marks. What are set we the gonna, agenda. Yeah, set the agenda for our meeting at Montana's for lunch. Email Tyler at OilersNation.com or DM us on Instagram or Twitter. Ask Tyler how his betting went. Sure. <laughs> yeah, because I kind of want to know. I kind of want to know the number, You too. need to be free next Wednesday at lunchtime to do this with us as well. That is a big caveat go have a delicious this whole lunch. thing. But you have a week to enter, and then next Monday we're going to pick the winner, right? If you're like so, me, you don't roll into a social setting without a list of pre-prepared topics 100%. to discuss, right? You've got your topic points written yep. down. Yep. Always. This is all the conversation we just need to see them. We just need to see them in advance. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They have to be emailed in advance. Mm -hmm. Like when you're asking a question to the Pope. That's right. Exactly. Tyler's the Pope. You don't just walk in and say, Pope, what up? Yep. You submit that shit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, one more time quickly as we wrap up our Vegas discussion, a big shout out to AMA Travel for making that just as seamless and as great as they did. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. And uh, Hotel is great. For the group Flights stuff like this, they're awesome. But if you're just looking to go... You and whoever, if you're just looking for a trip, AMA Travel can really help you out. Um, they it do is all the work? Yeah, they do all the work. It is a legit service. Um, can we so just talk about the through. airport real quick in Vegas? You didn't need to show your boarding pass at any stage until you got to your gate. All you need to see is your passport. I kept pulling up my boarding pass, and the security guys were like, I don't care. Keep it going. I was like, okay. So we were sitting there having just like something to eat, something to drink before we got on the plane, and we just kind of like, you could clear security, international security, if you so wanted. With a passport on. With a passport. They, they don't must care be so confident pass. in their recordings of everybody. They're like, okay, if you want to come to McCarran and fuck around, we'll just follow you home with all the cameras. They also did a rebrand. It's not McCarran anymore. <gasps> what is it? It's Harry something. Harry Styles. Oh, yeah. really Harry Styles he's Airport? Got a, he's got a residency there. Phenomenal. I'd fly into there. Ah. And now next up on the agenda, after that great trip from AMA Travel, 
is a great trip we have coming up with Tourism Jasper and the Jasper Pond Hockey Tournament. Uh, The info, chehockey.com, if you want to enter. This is a legit pond hockey tournament in the sense that you will not find a better backdrop. The ice is very good as well. It is on a pond in the middle of the mountains in one of the premier hotels in the country. JPL. JPL is just magic in the mountains. Unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff. I can't wait to go. Um, There is still time to register your team as well. CHEHockey.com. Or if you don't want to do that, you just want to go to Jasper in January anyways, that event is on right now. Celebrate the lighter side of winter. Lots of exciting events, including a street party, live bands, Fremont-esque, some might say, Mm -hmm. whiskey, wine, and hops, whatever you drink. It is the ultimate apres. So check out Jasper in January from our friends at Tourism Jasper. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I'm, I can't wait. I'm, I'm drinking uh, only water. I am hydrating water. until that event, uh, yeah. and I'm looking forward to that. But I can't wait. It's gonna be fun. And we got we're we are going with a giant crew too because we also got somehow Flames Nation tricked their way onto this. We got the Barn Burner crew oh, coming, man. so That'll at least we good. got a good Derby match, as they have to say. <laughs> Can I tell you what uh, what my lovely girlfriend had sitting out for me when I got home last night? <laughs> uh, chicken Alfredo. No, I wish I Barn was Burner. No. Uh, she said, you have been drinking too much and you've been out too much. You need to stay home and have no alcohol. So she bought me NHL 23 for the PlayStation and then a six pack of non-alcoholic beers. And I was like, this is all you get all week. You are doing nothing else. You don't leave the house. So that's my plan. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. You got a video game out of all that? Yeah. I don't know. I go to Vegas, leave her at home for four days. I come back. I got a new video game and the non-alcoholic beers was the funny part of that. She's like, I know you're going to want to drink a beer at some point. You are not allowed. No more alcohol. (laughs) So, I'm on the I path. I stunk like it just on my way home. I went to pick up my dog after <laughs> the pool. Was Frank mad at you? Oh, he's big mad. So, I just go into my niece's house real quick, and she's just like, you fucking stink. I was like, yeah. I, I felt like it. I yeah. felt it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, just, Karen. we just hunkered down yesterday in a sports book for like was, six hours yep. and just killed time. So, I'm not surprised it's a little spicy. Sometimes you got to just... We almost got a room for them. I was going to say, you should have got a room I going to. I, so I tried to see if I extend my room another night. So once again, something should have done beforehand. Didn't think about... Because doing it the day of, they, they wanted you. 286 US. They know they're the, doing. It's like, oh. I mean, I'm up. If you're winning though, John. Where's that? If you're I winning. nursed... Yesterday was one of those days we were watching football. I think I nursed one Bud Light for two hours probably. When I walked over, I was like, I don't know how you guys are drinking. I was stunned. Well, goat well, came we had with to pay, shots. Yeah, we had to pay the, uh, the like we, we couldn't just sit there. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah, and then Goat and the boys from Utah brought us shots, and I'm just like, this is the last thing I need. Yeah. But then after I finish it, I'm like, I can kind of feel the engines yeah. priming again. Yeah. yeah it's oh, funny that'll make how that it works. Work. It's funny how that works. How it works. Who got the medallions? Well, uh, the Utah boys. The Utah boys made those. They're yeah. So good. And also cool. cowbells. Cowbells, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were very loud cowbells. They made f- a bunch of them for everybody. And you were allowed to bring them into the arena? I did not bring my cowboy. I see. Uh, yes, you could have brought it in. I think some people did. If I they didn't. don't want a boarding pass in the airport. They ain't checking cowbells at <laughs> the arena, Chalmers. Well, you go through like the metal detectors and all that stuff. But yeah, it was. Uh, I, we didn't get to do our high five line because it was raining outside. Yeah, that was a weird thing. It was raining in Vegas, which is off brand. Yeah. Everything gets so slippery too when it rains there. It's because like, it's not. Yeah, they're not used to. They're not meant for rainy, cold. For moisture. Do like any pool days? Pools even open there? Right pools now? aren't open. Well, pools I guess someone open. saw it. Someone hotel there was, was a couple of pools open, but like it was cold. Yeah, like, it was like fifteen degrees the whole time. Hmm. Which felt nice, like just walking around in hoodie weather was fine. Also, an honorary save to Tyler for bringing my hoodie home that I had already. I just assumed it was Vegas's hoodie now. Yeah, I had it tied around my waist the whole night because I care about you. <laughs> and I just it's didn't a want cool to wear look. It. I just <laughs> didn't want you. Well, Liam, when we were going to the watch party, he's like, look at the shirt I brought for the watch party. And it's got a big banana on it. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, but I don't want to wear my hoodie now. I want people to see the banana tee. So he just had it rocked around his waist the whole time. It was it was a look. My was Liam a probably had 20 bananas on the trip. Too. No, he didn't. It's people were buying him bananas. Yes. Yep. Captain Felton, Captain Felton. Felton. Did you hear about this? Yes. Unbelievable. Tell it again. Tell the podcast. This is way, yeah. way um, heavy. So basically, we were doing Oilers Nation every day on Friday. Captain Felton is in the chat. And he just made a note about like, ah, oh, maybe I'll look at the flight deals. We're like, we need your captain uniform. Yeah. So son of a bitch, he did it. 
He flew in from Vancouver to Vegas Saturday morning, landed at 9.30 Vegas time, was there for the Saturday taping of ON every day, woke up Sunday at 7, flew back home. Is he an actual airline captain? Yeah, he might have flown his own plane home. I'm not sure. Is that his? No, he's not. No, a, he's not no? a pilot. No, no. no. But he that uniform he made is amazing. It's he great. Yes. The part, and he did. He walked into the room and gave Liam a banana, banana. Yep, he did. And Liam also, first thing he did when he got to Vegas was he went and got a six pack of bananas from CVS because he knew he'd need them. <laughs> and he was like, can you believe these are two bucks? <laughs> Best deal on the strip. Yep. Unbelievable. <laughs> Inflation touches everything but the banana prices. Like that's because nobody buys them but crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I loved it. And then he had them on display during the live show. I saw them there on the casting couch. Yeah. It really was. It looked the like the captain an flew in room. just for the night. Yep, just for the night. Didn't even go to the game. I went to the game. Oh, I think he got it there at 9 30. In the morning. Oh, so he was with you all day Saturday. Yes, the day yeah. before oh, okay. we got into this exchange. And after the show, he texted me. He's like, dude, I'm, I, I think I'm going to make this work. I'm like, all right, sweet. I don't know. The, the captain lives a, uh, an interesting life to me because I never, he's always somewhere. He's always doing something. Yep. He's doing stuff, yeah. He's living his life. Just the world is yeah, his Yeah, he was able to get a ticket like two rows down from us. and Oh, very good. Yeah, so uh, he had a good time. It was a great time. He missed Fremont, though. He couldn't make it. <sighs> yeah. That's a shame. Well, he was trying to dra- jam three days of a nation vacation into one, and I know. It, it got him. I know. Yeah. He was excited. It was yeah. a big one. That was dangerous, Wade. Oh, awesome. Beautiful. Legendary. Oh, unbelievable! He, he is Jersey. also so he is also. I shouldn't say he's a. He tells you what he's doing, but he is all over the place. Yo, he he covered some miles. Uh, yeah, he, he, I think he banged up seventy five thousand steps or something in the three Jeez. days. So yeah, yeah, you he's, just kind of see him pop up in different spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there for all the events, but like he's got his own agenda. The stuff he wants to do. He's a sommelier, and there's some cool wine stuff, and so he's just searching for good food and what. And he's always got the story of like, oh, I had this really nice bourbon here. Just like he just goes to places for like one drink because he likes to explore. And got some seafood. Just pairs it with the wine. It was yeah, just, yeah, he had he had a lot of a lot of soldiers on the table. A lot yeah, of we wine missed the, the we missed the wine and Taco Bell night. I was kind of disappointed in that, but that's all good. Well, and there's two things that just don't seem right in a sentence together. What's with the sommelier? Uh, yeah. yeah, wine and Taco Bell. You can pair Taco can Bell. Bear. Uh, what would I get with a crunchy gordita? Uh, <laughs> he did exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what you're saying. He did that. Yeah. He had pairings for us. It just never came together. I think yeah. you just like booze at that point. I liked booze at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I was just getting a Modelo when I got I don't there. know if like red wine and Taco Bell is like a good mix. Oh, sure. Red meat. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he was very specific. Is Taco He's Bell like, red meat? <laughs> well, well meat what adjacent. color meat is squirrel, Chalmers? What color? <laughs> Probably brown. So he's like, okay, well, how much hot sauce do you put on your stuff? Oh, because if you put hot sauce, meat. then I've got you a white wine. Yeah, you know, sweet so it's wine. a sweeter wine. And then he goes, if you don't go hot sauce, we're going this one over here. I feel like I'd just be like, yo, Danger, can I just enjoy my Taco Bell here, bud? I'm trying to be drunk in Vegas. I'm trying to be drunk in Vegas. Oh, we were the ones begging Coke. for it. Yeah, I was. Like, I was we actually were, bummed out we didn't. Yeah, do I'm that. very no, I'm disappointed that we didn't. It's do just it. three days disappears in a flash. Like, oh yeah, gone. And then the other person who you've got to get on a better late than never because we got to really get an Our understanding. Our boy Waz was just. Waz was hilarious. He was an Waz was also everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Mm-hmm. He was the wind. He would just pop up randomly, pop up. and sometimes you would be like Waz, and he would just. This video of getting culture shock from looking at tall buildings and bright lights. I'm like, that's not culture shock. (laughs) Well, maybe it is culture shock. what What about the photo he posts? And it's like, Vegas is wild. And it's like him like in front of the Bellagio fountain. Like just like a beautiful <laughs> photo behind him. And he's like, Vegas is wild. <laughs> Does anybody know where I can get coffee? Or he goes here? on the ON Twitter oh, account. I saw that. For I was like, I don't know suggestions. About this. Isn't there a Starbucks every other corner? Asking for coffee suggestions? <laughs> Yo, you can't find it anywhere. Jesus. You know? uh, it was, Has he ever uh, been out of here, this city? <laughs> that was and his then first he, time. And he was really pumped yesterday because he found a place that sold noodles, noodles and tacos. Yeah, that one oh, was, that was awesome. That didn't make a ton of sense. It was fun watching being at Vegas again for the first time through his eyes. Yeah, yeah. But like he kind of like it was like we had a, we have our group chat and I just took a photo of the ponies. I took everyone the first night uh, over to play the plastic horses, like the mm-hmm. you know, oh yeah, just to kill some time and have some drinks. And um, so huge, a whole bunch of us did it. Waz was one of the people there. So, anyways, I the next day I'm back there. And I just send a photo to the group just for as a good laugh. And like within 30 seconds, Waz is sitting beside me. So like, I love this game. And then I think he's betting. And then I went to go turn to talk to my friend. And then I turn and then back and he was gone. 
Also, so he put out this post, Charles, being yeah. like, where's the best spot in Vegas to grab a quick coffee or breakfast? He's standing in Italy at the Park MGM. Oh, yeah, there's plenty this of... This place right there sells coffee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure he, was, he was right fucking there. <laughs> and they have breakfast sandwiches the whole nine yards. Somebody the elevator like, to your, opens. To your right. Yes. <laughs> the elevator opens. Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I lo- and also the, the most was thing ever is it's on it's Sunday, the day we're leaving. We've been there now for over 48 hours. And he goes, man, slot machines are fun. I was like, you're just starting to play them? He was like, yep. Yeah, just, just, just figured out how out. they worked. Yep. But he also got his first taste of Vegas giveth, Vegas taketh away. So we post in our group chat that he won a couple of shekels. And I, my first thing is, I was like, was cash in the win, buddy. See him an hour later. I'm like, did you cash in the win? He's like, didn't go so well from there. Yeah. 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 I feel like Waz is a guy in a war movie who we're all in a trench and we're like, oh, there's that guy. There's this guy. There's Waz. And then he's like, going over the top, boys. And then like a <laughs> foot lands. And you're like, I never got to know him. You're just like walking past Bellagio. He jumps out of the fountain. He's like, yeah. this place is awesome. And just like <laughs> runs the other way. You're like, That's, That's essentially what it was. Yeah, the guy you in put the movie your debit cards in those machines and get cash? <laughs> <laughs> this place is nuts. Waz. Did you have a buddy system for him? It sounds like he was all over the place. He, by was, he was roomed up with danger suede. Yeah. He was wearing a life jacket. Mm. That was enough. Okay, good. He so the next time we go, the obvious thing is we're GoProing him the entire time. Yeah. Next time, <laughs> yeah. we need to know what he's doing because he is. But like one minute he's at Caesars, next like he's like like, and next minute he's at New York, New York. And if you know how the strip breaks up, like that's like seven kilometers apart. And he's just. Did bored. you guys take the tunnel? No. No. I forgot about the tunnel, to be honest. Yeah, actually. I it must be very good. What tunnel? The Tesla tunnel. The, the <sighs> demonstration tunnel of what underground tunnels would be. Where are we yeah, to heard of it. Imagine a tunnel with cars. With Teslas and pink lights for mood. I did ride in a Tesla as my Uber. <laughs> it was very funny. We, me and Rick got an Uber. I had, I've only been in a Tesla once, so I knew about the weird doors. So I jump in the car, and I'm looking out the window. Rick does it. He's going like this. Along the side because it's just flush. What do you have to do? You have to push the back end of the handle and then it pops out kind of like a lever situation. Yes, nothing is normal. No, it was very, very funny. We had a great time. Um, you want to wrap with a little hockey talk? Because there's some spicy stuff floating around. First off, Evander Kane might play tomorrow. Can we talk about insider bag milk nailing Vinny DeHarnay immediately after the game st- ended? You nailed it. Thank you. Insider bag milk. Vinny DeHarnay stays. Nima Linen goes down. If Kane's going to come back tomorrow... That means the Oilers need to send down Devin Shore, move. Yamo's going on LTR. Yamo's sick. But didn't Kenny Holland just say two weeks more for Kane? Of it seems like he's coming in. He fully practiced today and said his shot isn't 100%. He won't say what percent it is, but it won't be 100% kind of the whole year is the gist of what he said, but he feels ready to go and contribute. Let's go. So if Kane comes back, Murray needs to go on LTIR. I he was on the team. I think he may have. Okay. Um, We're good then. Got to wave Devin Shore. And then I'll you, wave. And then you also have to wave one of Yanmark, Ryan, Fogel, or Pugliarvi. I know who I'd wave. Who? Wave bye-bye to the former Bison King. You don't wave that guy, though. I think he gets claimed. So unless you really want the $3 million bucks. Well, it's not you like are. Kane's leaving again. He's here to stay now. This yeah, is a permanent but demotion. If you, but you could wave Fogel and he'd clear and at least you hold Name on. Name the four of them again? Ryan, Ryan Fogel, Yanmark, Yanmark, or Pugliarvi. One of them's got to go on well, waivers. What about Devin Shore? He needs to go too. Mm-hmm. It's Shore plus one of those other guys. Ah. And they're going to be running like a basically min roster. I'd, I'd send Fogel. I'm just mad at Yessi. So how did we make it all work at the start of the season when he was playing with us? Well, well Yanmark, Yanmark was gone. Costin wasn't around. Uh, Clean yeah. hadn't become him. Clem is him. He's uh, the greatest. I just, I love him. If someone claims Fogel, you're probably pretty happy. I think if someone claims Yessi, you're probably a little bit more like, ah, damn it. This experiment is over. That's what I yeah. would say. Timu Salami tweeted today that uh, Pulleyarver needs to get traded, needs to see a change of scenery. Is that what he said? Well, yeah, Timu, like, don't get involved. I mean, if you... He's backing up his countrymen. Come on. I mean, everyone knows that. I think it, the Oilers have done their fair part for Yessi's career at this point. Yeah, but I just think they're close to the deadline when some teams, some rebuilding teams, like sell off a shitload of assets. I think one of them might look at Pulleyarver and be like, hmm. Let's just see what we got. You here. seem pretty got. smart for a guy who was feeding money into a slot machine while smiling and saying, I love gambling. 
<laughs> hey, we all have our faults. Yeah. <laughs> it was my favorite thing. I love I gambling. Love you're probably right, your M check. Uh, yeah, it's, it's probably Fogel. Jeff Merrick said on 32 Thoughts that he the Oilers are going to surprise people with who they put on waivers to make the roster crunch work. He also said Connor? the Oilers are going to be kicking tires on Bo Horvat. He said Bo Horvat would be a fit, but his reasoning drove me nuts. Well, he goes, one person mentioned to me on of Saturday. Of course he'd be a fit, but we can't fit him. One person mentioned to me on Saturday as well that he can see Edmonton being a long-term fit for Bo Horvat. Two, he, auto ad together. Two, he's amendable for going there. And then he goes, three, who knows about the future of their two big dogs, specifically Leon Dreisaitl, who's a couple years away from UFA. Jeff Merrick. Jeffrey. Yeah. Who do you think we you really are? Doing we this? know we're thinking it, but it, now's not the time. No. Give us, we still have a chance to. Connor and Leon sticking it. together is the Oilers' best chance to keep Connor and Leon. Yes. Yes. I think you signed them both again. Yeah, well, if, to. well. Obviously, they're going to try. It's just, will they want to? Will he? But you have a stronger proposition to them if they're together. Don't you think Pooley Harvey's just past the point of rescue here by now? I just don't see any there's fight just, in him, man. There's I don't, just no upside to it. I don't. I watch him play, and I don't see any... There's no fire. There's. There's. I see a lot of resignment. I'm resigned to this fate. He had every opportunity. He's the Bison King. Yeah. Bums me out. Well, it'll be interesting. When does this stuff have to happen? By the minute Kane suits up? If he's going to play, it has to happen tomorrow at noon. That's why people love Clem Costin. They love seeing a guy who gets no chance and makes the most of it anyways. Like, yep. he didn't come here with any herald. There was no heralding. So Unheralded. What does yet. this week look like for the Oilers? Kraken to, uh, tomorrow and Tampa Bay Thursday, Vancouver Saturday. Our next, like, eight games outside of Tampa are very interesting. You can make you can make a little. We can make a noise. dent. Yeah, I mean, I would argue the end of this road trip was just a huge momentum turner for this team. Like, and Skinner's back with the team. Come tomorrow. Congratulations. Yeah, on little Seventy Stewart? or seven pounds four ounces. To be. Seventy-four. His jersey number. Ooh. They probably rounded up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just totally fake. Yeah. Like how Yamo's five ten. Yeah. Oh, you want to know who was like Mister Popularity? Was Yamo's dad? Yeah. He's even smaller. I heard than Yamo. He was. He was at the bar that we we're all at before oh. the game. I guess Yamo was in the bar too with him because he's heard him and Banjo guy. Oh well, there you go. The Banjo. Yamo and Banjo guy. Yeah, Banjo guy was what all. What was yeah. Yamo senior like? You talked to him? No, we didn't. But he was like people were just lining up to take photos with him. Yep, it was funny. He I saw a photo of Yamo and his dad, and unless there was some sort of photoshopping afoot, he was shorter than his son. Yes, I've seen the same thing. That yeah. is a shocking turn of events. You know what I love? Well, your M check, I don't know what you're looking at, but I throw this out to you. I love the marketing dollars being put behind Charlie Woods and the PGA. I don't know if, well, they've got me clearly because I watched two videos, but the amount of Charlie and Tiger content that they're making, oh, yeah. like he's already got more promotion than 90% of the PGA players. When you see Charlie stand beside a kid his own age, like Charlie is a jacked unit. Oh, yeah, his, his big neck kid. is thick. Uh, Last year he was a little kid. This year he's like this little. Yeah, and you, and you compare him against the other kids his age. Like, oh, geez. But they're interviewing about how he gives Tiger shit. He's like, and then I give him a little bit more, and then I know when there's too much. And Tiger's like, yeah, we know where to draw the line, don't we, Charlie? And I'm like, Tiger's not so bad. Look, he's a dad. I forget about all that other stuff. All of it. And the PGA's like, keep buying Instagram ads. It's working. He's got a good swing. Oh, Great yeah. swing. And yeah, he's got he's, the woods he's gonna, the knowledge of being at the top, so it's not like this crazy long shot like it was for Earl, right? Tiger's been to the top. If that's the no, He's playing, you know, he's he's played the full dangerous. rounds of golf on TV Yeah, at this age. Yeah, and like striping it up the middle and telling his caddy yeah, to he's grab not gonna be, and shit. He's not going to be turned off by the, the hype and by like the... the uh, He'll be better equipped to handle it than his dad. Him. Oh, yeah. Tiger knows how to push him, but not like Earl pushed him because next thing yeah. you know, you want to be a Navy SEAL for no reason. Oh, that documentary. I forgot about that. So that was intense. So, like, let's dial that back about 5% for Charlie. I'm really Very good at golf. Not a Navy SEAL. I'm really looking forward to the PGA Netflix documentary. Me show. too. I want to watch uh, the tennis one. It was apparently good. And then also Milf Manor. Wow. Did you yes. hear about the twist of Milf Manor? No. Nope. Nope. Don't ruin it. Has it started? It yeah, started last night. night. I'm going home and watching I just it. know from Twitter. Ah. I'm going. I, I think everyone kind of knows what the twist it. is, but. I muted it on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want anybody to tell me. Really experience. about MILF Manor. This is the exact kind of garbage show that I need to just decompress the brain. 
There's no reason to watch it, Mm-mm. except there's every reason every to watch it. You're not going to be a better person for watching it. Arguably well, I worse. I remember an episode of 30 Rock where they were making fun of MILF Island. Yeah. And it was like such a hilarious, but it was sixth graders. I mean, that's obviously a bit more risque. But they've basically made MILF Island for real. Kind of, yeah. That's remarkable. Kind of. On TLC. Oh, yeah. It, it, it does teach you stuff. It is the learning channel, yep. after all. So this is what the end looks like. <laughs> uh, before we wrap it up, got to get some love <laughs> to our friends at Oodle Noodle. Calgary location going good? Yeah, it's rock and roll. Hell yeah. Um, I think I might do like, an Oodle Noodle, oh. a war wonton tonight. Some green onion cakes. It's a good war wonton. Man. I need some salts and some broth and some veggies in my system. Chalmers, are you watching a video with audio? No, that's not me. It's people oh. outside. Oh, my no, apologies. I'm actually looking. I was looking. I was People tw- I was looking up at what the <laughs> spoilers for Milf Manor was. Non phones <laughs> making noise. And then I got into John Bones Jones coming back. That means quite literally nothing to me. No. Yeah, me neither. It's not into that kind of thing. eh? Not a UFC not, guy. Not a man. eh? There's only so many sports. Well, I can it'd handle. be like if Connor McDavid, who everybody said is the best in the world at what yeah. he does. Decided to be his own worst enemy for like two years, and now is finally coming back. Yeah, I was going to say. What do you do? To fight. Eh. He just got in a lot of trouble. Yeah. With the law? With the law. With, Morally with, not a great story. Just not a good, not a good not a guy. Good, yeah, Thank God he can come good. back to human cockfighting. Thank God that door hasn't closed <laughs> in his <laughs> face, eh? Thank yeah. God they're not like, uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh, not here, not now. The door remains open for you, guy I don't know the name of. John Bones Jones. His really? brothers are in the NFL. Yeah, he's, he's a big dude. No, I hate. He's a big. This is going to be a huge draw for them to get him back. Maybe the big. It's probably the biggest UFC story like ever. Him coming back. Really? No idea. Oh yeah. He's. They said he was the Did best in the world, and then the he just sports? wasn't fighting. Was he banned or he just quit? No, he just couldn't come to terms with his contract. Mm-hmm. He just every single thing that could happen happened. I think if Frank Dukes came back, that'd be the biggest story. And is that John Claude Van Damme? Yes. No. In Bloodsport. Yes. No. You know, like, put up your Dukes? Yep. No, I get it. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, we'll be back Thursday again. I once bought the Bloodsport DVD for 51 cents at Walmart. Those are good value purchases. Yes. Yeah. The Klim cost. I didn't even have a DVD player, but the value was too good to pass up. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a DVD player with I the money you saved. So. No problem. All right, uh, once again, if you want to come have lunch with us at Montana's next mm. Wednesday, you can enter the contest by one. Make sure you follow Montana's on all your socials too. Can I enter? Because I really want to have lunch. Well, you're a part of this, so yes. Uh, so um, nice. I would also like to say if you feel like you missed out on the Vegas vacation, which you did, yep. we're going to Toronto as well. Toronto will be so much fun. Our friends at AMA Travel again are going to help us out. So or go to Montana's, to which they say is the Vegas of rib joints. Absolutely. Can't wait to go back. All right, that's a wrap. Talk to everybody on Thursday.